Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy, and let's go ahead and practice arithmetic uh, by solving this problem here. And of course, we're going to need to be extra careful because I want you to do this problem without the aid of your calculator. So what is the problem? Well, we have 5 times 1 plus uh, 3 times 9 minus 1, uh, all that divided by 6. What is this equal to? Again, do this without the aid of a calculator, because if you use a calculator, it's going to take all the fun out of it. Uh, also, uh, you're not going to really be able to understand some really important uh, math concepts. That's what we're really trying to practice in this particular problem. But if you can solve this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. Then I'm going to walk through this problem step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go and take a look at the answer here. So here again is the question. The correct answer is 25. All right, so how'd you do? Well, hopefully you got this correct. And if that's the case, you're going to get yourself a nice little happy face, an A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. Uh, so you can tell your friends and family that you understand the order of operations. Okay, so what am I talking about? Order of operations. Well, hopefully you, uh, you've heard of the order of operations. It has something to do with this nice little uh, acronym. Uh, PEMDAS, right? So uh, there's a little mnemonic, a little memory aid that goes with this, which is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. This thing right here, this little saying, it's probably been around for like 100 years. I'm guessing. I don't know. I don't know if it's 100 years, but I know it's, it was around way back 30, 40, 50 years ago when I was learning mathematics. And I'm sure people even before that had nice little lovely sayings. But this is what we're talking about, just in case you've ever heard this phrase. But we are talking about the order of operations. So let's go and get into the solution right now. Okay, so again, we're talking about the order of operations. So what type of operations? We're not talking about uh, operations like, okay, uh, the order of operations. First, I need to get a foot surgery. Then I need to get a shoulder surgery. Then I need to get, you know, uh, LASIK eye surgery. That's not the kind of, uh, you know, order of operations we are talking about. So the, what we're really talking about here is mathematical operations or mathematical operators. So in mathematics, if you have two numbers, let's say I had like two and seven, well, I can do different things with these numbers, right? Uh, I can perform what we call a mathematical operation on them, right? So various mathematical operators would be multiplication, would be uh, one of them. So here, this is multiplication right here. Of course, we have division, we have subtraction, and we have addition. So these are what we call mathematical operations. Now, uh, when you have a, a math problem with all different types of operations going on here, i.e. multiplication, division, subtraction, addition. The way, the order you do this problem, okay, we just can't take any order because if I would, did uh, addition first, then subtraction, and some other person did a multiplication, then division, it, the way, the order you do this work is going to generate different outcomes, different um, uh, answers, right? So there's got to be a very specific order to do these operations i.e. the order of operations. And we can remember the order of operations by our lovely phrase here again, PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And let's talk about what that means here real quick, okay? All right, so P stands for parentheses. We're gonna do everything inside parentheses first. And if we have parentheses within parentheses, we're going to work on the inside parentheses. Now, the P here also, really kind of stands for grouping symbols. So if you have like brackets, those are also considered parentheses and these little squiggly brackets as well. Or basically where um, the P is not just strictly parentheses, it's brackets, it's these little squiggly brackets, it's grouping symbols. Okay, so that's what the P stands for. So that's the first thing we're gonna be focusing on. E is exponents. You could just kind of think of this as power. So the E would be, if you see things like 
2 to the third power. This 3 is an exponent, but uh, this is what this is referring to. You're going to do that next, right? So some of you might be saying, why don't they just put that as a P uh, to represent powers? Because if we had parentheses and powers, we would have two Ps. It would be confusing, so that's why we have an E there. Okay, so that's what that is. Now here is probably the most classic part where people confuse or get confused with the order of operations. So M and D is the next one. Now some of you might be saying, well, why don't you just do M? You did P, you did E, why don't you just do M first? Or are you doing both M and D? Because what you do next is multiplication or division. It all depends what comes first from left to right. In other words, if I have multiplication, and then a division that from left to right, I'll do multiplication first and then division. However, if I have division first and then multiplication, I got to do division first because it, it comes first from uh, the left-hand side going to the right-hand side. Very, very common misunderstanding when it comes to the order of operations. And then lastly, we have A and S, which is addition and subtraction, and this works the same way as multiplication and division, whatever comes first from left to right. Okay, so that is basically everything you need to know uh, to do this problem. Of course, uh, you should have you know your basic um, number operations down, but let's go ahead and get into the order of operations right now with this particular problem right here. Okay, so what are we gonna do first? Well, we're going to uh, focus in on our PEMDAS, right? PEMDAS, it's just a checklist. And we're like, okay, we certainly have parentheses. Uh, so which parentheses should I be focusing on? Well, we have the outside parentheses, we have brackets, which are you know basically considered parentheses, but we have the innermost parentheses, these right here. So you're gonna go inside those innermost parentheses and do whatever math work is in there. Okay, so here we have nine minus one, which of course is eight, no big deal there. So what comes next now? All right, so now looking at the prom, I have five, I have uh, parentheses, I have brackets right here. So these brackets right there are the same thing as parentheses. So I'm gonna focus in right inside of these second mo uh, most, uh, the, the inner parentheses with uh, the prom as it's written right here, which is of course what's inside the brackets. So now when I look at that, I got three times eight divided by six. So I have division right here uh, I'm sorry, I have multiplication, my apologies, and I have division. So I'm going to do what comes first from left to right. So what comes first from left to right? Of course, that would be multiplication. So we're going to have 3 times 8, which of course is 24. And notice here, I'm just kind of continuing to write the rest of the problem. I'm not trying to take too many steps here. So that'll be 24 divided by 6. So now... Uh, proceeding on, which 24 divided by 6? Well, 24 divided by 6. Again, I'm not done with my work inside the parentheses, right? So I got to continue to go um, and finish all the work inside the parentheses before I can kind of leave that parentheses. So 24 divided by 6, of course, is 4. So now that's done. I have my brackets here, but technically, if you wanted to, you could just drop those brackets because there's nothing uh, more to do. And now we're left with this last set of parentheses. And of course, there's only one thing to do inside of those, and that is one plus four, which of course is five. And now we have five times, anytime you have a number outside of parentheses like this, that means a multiplication. So we have five times five, which of course is 25, which of course is our answer. Okay, so hopefully this all makes sense to you. Uh, again, you know, uh, some of you might be saying, well, I'm taking algebra. This is like too basic stuff. I need some stuff with some variables and equations. Well, listen, if you don't understand this, you're going to struggle in algebra. There are too many uh, students taking uh, advanced mathematics kind of blew through their foundational work, right? Things that they really should have mastered. And they're having a tough time with more advanced math because they didn't really practice kind of the fundamentals. So I'm going to suggest that if you're struggling with uh, some of these things, check out my math foundation course. It's a little mini course, but I really go over all the basic math skills you need in order to be uh, very successful in algebra. Right? So I go through things like uh, the order of operations, percent, place values, decimals, fractions, all that kind of good stuff. So if you're a little bit weak with basic math, that course will really help you out. 
All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.